السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك بسم الله uh, Now today inshallah we will be resuming our first session after uh, Ramadan and inshallah we will go for eight more sessions once a week inshallah to finish uh, Amma, the tafsir of Juz'a Amma inshallah. So last time we stopped at uh, the beginning of Surah uh, um, Al-Nazi'at. We, uh, we talked about how uh, people uh, uh, will be resurrected after the quake shall happen. So uh, today, inshallah, we will be starting with the story of Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam and that will be Ayah 15. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will mention the story of Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam for a reason. We know that the non-believers belied Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they did not believe in him. And uh, even though Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wanted ev everyone to be a believer because he tasted the beauty, he tasted the good taste of faith and he wanted everybody to taste it. So, uh, and that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to him in Surah Al-Kahf, فَلَعَلَّكَ بَاخِعًا نَفْسَكَ عَلَىٰ آثَارِهِمْ إِنْ لَمْ يُؤْمِنُوا بِهَذَا الْحَدِيثِ أَسَفَةً Then perhaps you would kill yourself through grief over them, O Muhammad if they don't believe in this message. This was out of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi love and mercy to his ummah. He wanted everybody to, to, to be a way to be saved from torture, from uh, punishment in the day after. He wanted everybody to enjoy the, uh, what Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala has prepared for the winners. So he, he presented us this story to give an example, a live example of what happened to one of the prophets. So it's not only a story. There is a moral, there is a lesson out of this story. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Hal ataka hadith Musa. And now when we are going to read this, this story, we are not going to read the whole thing, how Sayyidina Musa, uh, uh, what happened to him, how he met his wife, what happened, how he got married, no. We're going to have a, just a, a very short uh, portion of the story to support the purpose why this story was mentioned here. So he's, Allah said, subhanahu wa ta'ala, هَلْ أَتَاكَ حَدِيثُ مُوسَى Has there come to you, Muhammad, the story of Musa? So why are these people opposing him? Why are they exaggerating and belying Musa? Musa, uh, Fir'aun, uh, reached the top place of transgression. He said, Ana rabbukum al I'm your Lord, the highest. He said, I, ma alimtu lakum min ilahin ghayri. I never witnessed that there is any other uh, uh, God for you than myself. This is transgression. What? type of of this uh, person is that so that uh, belying of Fir'aun that transgression of Fir'aun was way much more than what Quraysh used to do for Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala did not uh, let down or put down Sayyidina Musa no he he on the uh, what he did to him, he gave him victory. So, torment is only not only in the day of judgment, but also in dunya when he drowned uh, Musa, uh, uh, Fir'aun, and all those who followed him. That was the the uh, punishment in this dunya, but all uh, way all. All the way from the uh, and from the time they witnessed this punishment until the day after, until 
uh, uh, eternity, for, forever, this will be their punishment. So Muhammad, know and be sure that whatever the non-believers have reached, whatever, whatever degree they did, and whatever uh, uh, harm they did to the uh, believers, be sure that we will give you victory. Be sure that we will save you. Let them think of uh, the story of Fir'aun. So when, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned this story here, it has a, a, a way of warning the non-believers of hitting their hearts hard to have some fear that there will be punishment, no matter how powerful that person was. And on the other hand, it's a kind of mercy to the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to calm him down and to uh, assure him that the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are always the winners. So Allah has sent Prophet Musa to Fir'aun and aided him with miracles. What did Fir'aun do? Fir'aun did not believe. He continued in his disbelief and transgression until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala seized him with a mighty and powerful punishment. So the story goes, Hal ataka hadith Musa? Has there come to you, Muhammad, the story of Musa? Is nadahu rabbuhu bil wadi al tuwa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has spoken to Prophet Musa on the holy sacred valley of Tuwa. This place is, uh, this mountain, this valley is in uh, Egypt. So he told him, when he talked to him, he said, اذهب إلى فرعون إنه طغى. Go to Fir'aun, and verily he has transgressed all bounds. He became arrogant, he became haughty, he, he, uh, he became super proud, superior, he considered himself above every person. So why, why to go to him? فَقُلْ هَلْ لَكَ إِلَىٰ أَنْ تَزَكَّ Say to him, would you purify yourself? Would you purify yourself from the transgression that you practiced, from killing people, from torturing people? Just repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So look at the uh, form of the way that he is ordered by Allah to talk to him, that Musa alayhi salam said, uh, or was ordered to talk. He did not ask him uh, to give orders to him, to order him to, to believe. No. He was just talking to his mind. It's not, it's not an order, but he was presenting that to him. Because, you know, the reason for that, Fir'aun, uh, claimed to be God. He would never, his ear would never uh, get an order from anybody. He's, he was always the, the one who gives orders. So if there is someone to order him, that person will, uh, will be tortured and uh, he will get rid of him in a second. So just tell him, will you respond to the path that will purify you? In Surah Taha, verse 44, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَقُولَا لَهُ قَوْلًا لَيِّنًا لَعَلَّهُ يَتَذَكَّرُ أَوْ يَخْشَى Speak to him with gentle speech that perhaps he may be reminded or have fear. So, فَقُلْ هَلْ لَكَ إِلَىٰ أَنْ تَزَكَّى وَأَهْدِيَكَ إِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ فَتَخْشَى I guide you to your Lord so that your heart becomes humble and you fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if this guidance happens, then fear will start to be practiced. When someone fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then he will feel that he is humiliated in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He will, he will humiliate himself. Who am I to transgress? He will 
know for sure the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he will obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he will have this fear in him. فَقُولَا وَأَهْدِيَكَ إِلَى رَبِّكَ فَتَخْشَى فَأَرَاهُ الْآيَةَ الْكُبْرَى So when Musa alayhi salam went there, went to Fir'aun, he showed him the great sign. Musa showed him a strong evidence and a clear proof of the truthfulness of what he had come up with from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He showed him the stick that uh, th that uh, was changed to a snake when he threw it. He showed him how his hand became white after he put it under his arm. But what happened to Musa? Musa uh, continued to deny. He denied and disobeyed. Uh, sorry, Fir'aun. So for, uh, Musa السلام, showed the uh, signs, but Fir'aun denied and disobeyed. He rejected the truth. Recognition is the knowledge of the heart and normally faith is its action. When you recognize something, then you recognize it first of all by your heart. And then you do what goes along with that feeling. So faith is to comply with the truth and submit to it. But Fir'aun refused the truth. He not only refused the truth, then he turned back, striving and plotting. Yes'a in Arabic means he was working so hard to oppose Musa, to prove him wrong, to confront him and to uh, trying to punish him. So what did he do? فَحَشَرَ فَنَادَى So he gathered his people and called out, proclaiming, saying, claiming that فَقَالَ أَنَا رَبُّكُمُ الْأَعْلَى I am your Lord, the highest, the most high. So first he belied Musa alayhi salam. Then he assured that he is the Lord, the most high. What did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do? فَأَخَذَهُ اللَّهُ نَكَالَ الْآخِرَةِ وَالْأُولَى Consequently, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala seized him with a punishing example for the hereafter and for this life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punished him severely and made an example of him for all rebellious people. Beware, this will be the result. Allah punished him for the first sin that he committed when he claimed to be the Lord, the Most High, and also for the, la the following sin when, which, when he belied Musa alayhi salam. And for plotting against him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, indeed, there is a lesson in this for all the people who fear, who obey. So this is not to be considered just as a story that is mentioned for entertainment. No. Each and every story in the Quran was told to get the uh, wisdom out of it, to get the lesson out of it. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala moves on. He says, أَأَنْتُمْ أَشَدُّ خَلْقًا are you harder to create or are the heavens harder to create or to be constructed? In Surah Yasin, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَوَلَيْسَ الَّذِي خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ بِقَادِرٍ عَلَىٰ أَنْ يَخْلُقَ مِثْلَهُمْ Isn't he who created the heavens and the earth 
able to create the likes of them. The one who created the heavens can create humans, can create everything else. Creating did not burden him. It wasn't difficult for him to do that. He raised it high, its height, and he has perfected it. If you look at the skies, they're perfect. There is not a crack in, a single crack in the sky. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raised it with no poles to hold it. Any building needs poles to hold the, the, the roof. But the skies are raised up high without any poles. He made it high. Vast in its play, space. And what, what did he do to these skies? He decorated them with stars and plants. Planets. So... These planets, these stars shine at night. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created and perfected how these skies look. He made its night dark and black. And he made its day bright, luminous, and shining. He didn't make it dark always, all the time, and he didn't make it light all the time. This is one sign of perfection. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing people how powerful he is. وَالْأَرْضَ بَعْدَ ذَلِكَ دَحَاهَا وَالْأَرْضَ بَعْدَ ذَلِكَ دَحَاهَا after that, after he created the earth, after he created the earth, he spread it out. So he created everything on earth just to make sure that you would live in a way that everything he has created will help you. He prepared the earth to make it ready for man to live on it. What did he do on it? And from within it, from within earth, he brought out its water and its meadows. And the mountains he has fixed firmly. We, we uh, um, uh, read in Surah uh, an naba how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created the mountains, the roar of the mountains in getting the, the earth fixed. So he settled the mountains firmly and established them in place. So he created the earth, he spread it out, he uh, brought out water, he made wed widows, uh, meadows, and he put the mountains firmly. Why? And that was a sustenance, as provision and benefit for you and your cattle. So rain will provide provision for people and cattle. Summer comes, land dries, no more, no more rain until next winter. Rain will bring fruit again, food again, leaves, trees, and life again. So life will come back again. Now think, what does this mean? What does this remind us of? This is similar to resurrection. Some, something, which is life, Life died and then came back again. So this life 
this is exactly as life after death. This is the day of judgment. So this assures the fact of life after death. This assures that people are going to be resurrected after they die. When this idea gets deeper in mind, then faith gets deeper in a person. SubhanAllah. So now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking, going to talk about the day after. So you, you see how well connected the ayahs are between each other. One story that leads to another, one thing that would lead to another. SubhanAllah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَإِذَا جَاءَتِ الطَّامَّةُ الْكُبْرَى But when the great frightening event befalls. What's that? It's the frightening day. It's the frightful and horrifying day of judgment. In Surah Al-Hajj, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَوْمَ تَذْهَلُ كُلُّ مُرْضِعَةٍ عَمَّا أَرْضَعَتْ وَتَضَعُ كُلُّ ذَاتِ حَمْلٍ حَمْلَهَا وَتَرَى النَّاسَ سُكَارَ وَمَنْ هُمْ بِسُكَارَ وَلَكِنَّ عَذَابَ اللَّهِ شَدِيدٌ Different images of what's going to happen in the day of judgment. You would feel that people are, are drunk, but they are not. It's the day of judgment. It's a horrifying day. It's a fright, frightful day. So now people know, those who did not believe earlier, they would know that this is reality. The believers will, will know, will be sure that what they believed in is truth. يَوْمَ يَتَذَكَّرُ الْإِنسَانُ مَا سَعَى so the day when man shall remember what he has striven for. Man will remember all his deeds, good and evil. That's why it is called the day of remembrance. So man will start to view a video of all his deeds. Everything will be presented for him. This is the day when I lied. This is the day when I cheated. This is the day when I hurt the feelings of so-and-so. This is the day when I did that. This is the day when I did not uh, 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 follow the order. So this is the day when, this is the day when. So what makes, what makes a human being transgress? This is an important question. So what, what is it that makes a human being transgress and do bad and evil deeds? It's his love to gaining as much as he can in this dunya. It's the love of achieving the goals and desires. But wait, not every desire we have should be fulfilled. So we have, we have to be careful what we are thinking of, what we are saying, what we are doing. One day, everything will be presented before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our presence. We need him to be pleased with us. So what happens now when, when man realizes that he is back to his Lord and that his deeds are presented before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will know for sure that Allah has kept a record of everything. But they did forget that there will be a day of reckoning. And hell shall be made apparent for whoever sees. Everyone, everyone will see hellfire. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Maryam, 
verse 71, and there is none of you except that he will come to it. So everyone will view hell and will view its blazing, blazing fire. Everyone, good or bad, believer and unbeliever, uh, righteous or not righteous, every single person will view the hellfire. So when they see it and they don't enter in it, they don't feel that they that's their place, when they are saved from it, then that itself is a great blessing. That itself is a big reward. But when they that when they are placed in heavens, that is a different type of reward. So, وَبُرِّزَتِ الْجَحِيمُ لِمَنْ يَرْ Everyone is going to see the hellfire. فَأَمَّا مَنْ طَغَى So then, for those who transgressed, what will happen? Those who rebelled, those who opposed, those who did not believe that there will be a punishment, but why would people transgress? Because they would think that they are powerful, that their powerful is eternal, that their uh, people are below them, that they are proud. So they did not believe or they forgot that there is even a power that's more powerful, way more powerful than their power. That their power is nothing in comparison to the real power. فَأَمَّا مَنْ طَغَى وَآثَرَ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا So that person transgressed and preferred this life over the day after and the life after death. So he did not believe in anything except of his pleasure, his uh, fortune, his uh, uh, everything that would please him in this dunya, and he made it. He transgressed beyond all bounds. So, what will happen to him? فَإِنَّ الْجَحِيمَ هِيَ الْمَأْوَى Verily, hell will be home. Hell will be the final destination. Hell be, will be the place, their eternal place that they will be in. لا يخفف عنهم العذاب. Punishment will not decrease. Punishment will not end. Punishment will be on and on and on and on eternally. They would call the people of uh, Jannah and they will ask them, Give us something. Give us some water. Give us some food. Give us something that will, uh, that will make our heart, that will make our life just a little less miserable. They would say, no. You will be forgotten the same way as you forgot Allah in this dunya and the same way as you disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the dunya. So, فَأَمَّا مَنْ طَغَى وَآثَرَ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا فَإِنَّ الْجَحِيمَ هِيَ الْمَأْوَى What's the other picture? وَأَمَّا مَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ وَنَهَا النَّفْسَ عَنِ الْهَوَى فَإِنَّ الْجَنَّةَ هِيَ الْمَأْوَى but as for him who feared standing before his Lord, who feared standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and restrained, him, restrained himself in dunya from desire, from evil, from doing anything bad. He who feared Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he who feared his judgment in the day after, he who uh, obeyed him, he who followed the rules, he, he, he who prevented his soul from following its desire. So this person, verily, heaven will be his home. 
heaven will be his final destination. He will be a winner. Whoever does good will be rewarded. He will be rewarded. يسألونك عن الساعة أيان مرساها. Oh, Muhammad. They ask you, when will the day of judgment be? And this question has been asked over and over and over in the Quran. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fima anta min zikraha. What do you know to mention of it? Fima anta min zikraha. Ila rabbika muntahaha. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows when it will be. So when Sayyidina Jibreel alayhi salam came to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he was sitting with his companions, so he, he asked him several questions about Islam, Iman, Ihsan. One of the other questions, he asked him, Masa'a. What is the hour? When is the day of judgment? The answer of Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, said, The one who is questioned about it knows no more than the questioner, than the one who asked the question. So, but Sayyidina Muhammad, وسلم, even though he doesn't know about it, even though if nobody knows when, when it will be, he gave us, he gave us hints that it's very close. He, but what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says? إِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ مُنْتَهَاهَا إِنَّمَا أَنْتَ مُنْذِرُ مَنْ يَخْشَاهَا The only thing you do is you are only a warner for those who feel it. For those who fear this day. I sent you to warn mankind and caution them to be aware, to be aware of the torment and punishment of Allah. So prepare yourself for it. If you fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you will fear standing before him. Imagine that someone does something, something evil. You would feel so bad if anyone would know that he is the one who, who did that thing. This is dunya. Imagine the day after. So we have to get ourselves all prepared. To stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. كَأَنَّهُمْ يَوْمَ يَرَوْنَهَا لَمْ يَلْبَثُوا إِلَّا عَشِيَةً أَوْ ضُحَاهَا It will be on the day they see it as if they, they uh, think that they had not remained in the world except for an afternoon or a morning or between them. Their whole life as if it were between a sunrise and a sunset. So if life is so short, we have to be aware why we are in this dunya. We have to be aware that we have to be uh, forgiving, that we have to practice mercy, that we have to be honest, that we have to be righteous, that we have to be good. We have to prepare ourselves for the day after. The stories go on, and we will move to Surah Abasa, inshallah. So, this surah, Surah Abasa, is designated after the word Abasa, which uh, with which it opens. So it says Abasa wa So what's the story here? One time. Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was uh, addressing 
um, some people, the leaders, so one of the leaders of uh, Quraysh, uh, Ubay bin Khalaf. So he was talking to him. He was trying to get him to enter into Islam. So uh, an, uh, a man, uh, a poor man, but a blind man came to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he wanted to talk to him. He wanted some advice uh, from him. So the man said, guide me, Ya Rasulullah, to the straight path. He wanted to get more information from Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was, was in the middle of a very important talk with that person, with that non-believer. So what happened? Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam frowned in the face of, the, uh, uh, of that poor man. And he just frowned at him and turned away to continue talking uh, with that uh, leader of Quraysh. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed these, these ayahs as, uh, uh, as a way to show Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam that what he did is not accepted. That Allah reprimanded Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam in a gentle matter. One way, this, this surah is one of the ways to prove that the Quran is not brought by Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So uh, he, Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, he, um, Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not bring the Quran. He did not create the Quran. So what he did, uh, mentioning when it was revealed, of course, it will be given to everybody. So what happened is that Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, of course, is the, trust, uh, the trustworthy, he is the Amin. of course, he said it to everybody. He wouldn't hide it. So Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, Habasa wa tawalla. So the surah is uh, uh, so this ayah, Abasa wa Tawalla, he frowned and turned away. And ja'ahu al-a'ma, because there came to him the blind man. The blind man approached him for something. وَمَا يُدْرِيكَ لَعَلَّهُ يَزَّكَّ And how would you know? He may attain purification. But for all you know, he might attain this purification. So his soul, he was asking Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for some guidance. He might adorn himself with good manners. Or if he was reminded, he would benefit from the reminder. He might, he might receive Adumnation, which might profit him. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned these ayahs, Abasa wa tawalla, anja'ahu al-a'ma, wa ma yudrika la'allahu yazzakka, aw yazzakkaru, fatanfa'ahu al-dhikra. Amma man istagna, fa'anta lahu tasadda. But, Whoever considered himself beyond need, that was the non-believer who did not believe in Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. فَأَنْتَ لَهُ تَصَدَّقْ You paid all attention for him. So as for him who thinks himself self-sufficient, without, he doesn't need you, to him you attend. You attend to that person who is unto uninterested so that he may convert to Islam. Though you would not be held responsible if he did not attain purification, if he did not purify himself, if he did not accept the message, you are not responsible for him. 
But as for him who came to you serious and sincere, fearful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, fearful of the day of judgment, to him, you are neglectful. And you were inattentive. You were too busy. You did not pay attention to him. So what's the, the wisdom of this? Sometimes something known should not be left for something possible. One should be more attentive to a student of knowledge who desires of knowledge, who is serious of getting knowledge and who is in need for it than any other person. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to be equal. So he should equally warn the noble and the weak, the rich and the poor, the master and the slave. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide to the right path whom, whoever he chooses. He has the profound wisdom, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So as we mentioned earlier, this is a surah that is a proof that the Quran is not from Say, uh, Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, is not written by Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but it's revealed by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And it's a, an amana of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it's his truthfulness, it's his trustworthy that he revealed, that he passed, trans, uh, passed all the words of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala without any single change, without anything. SubhanAllah. Indeed, it's a reminder. Allah reminds his servants through his book. So, so whoever wants, whoever wishes can remember him. If you wish, you can remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in all your affairs. Whatever you are doing, just remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Just do dhikr while you are working every day, throughout your day. Just keep remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you wish, you can read the Quran and remember Allah's, Allah's orders and work accordingly. In honored scriptures, in records held in honor, exalted, purified. Quran is honored, elevated in status. Quran's ayahs are connected and the meanings are related to each other. So the Quran explains itself. So you can read the Quran, you can remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by reading the Quran. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to purify our hearts through the Quran and to make us of those of the people of Quran who always have the connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through his words, through his, his book. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad. We will stop here, we'll stop here inshallah. And uh, we are at ayah 14 of Surah uh, Abasa. So inshallah, we'll continue next week, same time, inshallah. Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim. Ya rabbana laka alhamdu kama yinbaghi li jalali wa jika ma'adhimi sultanik. Allahumma inna nas'aluka min khayri ma sa'alaka minhu abduka wa nabiyuka Muhammadun sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa na'udhu bika min sharri ma sta'adaka minhu abduka wa nabiyuka Muhammadun sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma jalal al-Qur'an al-Kareem rabi'a qulubina wa manara darbina. Ya Allah, guide us. Guide us with your words, guide us with your Quran, guide our hearts and purify it. Thank you so much for attending. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.